Hey guys, it's me, Kigo Games here, and I'm back playing Doki Doki Literature Club Monica Before Story. So last time we got to this this image right there of Monica looking beautiful. He's having a date with us at the chocolate store. So yeah, let's get to this one and forgive me about the voice impressions about the stuff. Okay, you look beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. You look great too. I wish you really like wearing black. <laughs> But I wish my wardrobe had more vari variety. Sorry. It suits you. Oh, oops, wrong button. As Marco enters the store with me, we are met with an array of delicious scents. In surprise, we're met by the waiter at the door. He leads us in and starts setting up a booth for two of <laughs> For the two of us. So, yeah. Marco is giving me the uncertain looks, but I can... <laughs> But I can see the wonder in her eyes as she looks at the treats on display. It, it's, it, is it her earrings? Her autumn scent? Or the elegance in her movement? Soon enough, we take our seats. And the waiter asks us if we'd like anything to drink. Could I get a coffee? I was promised coffee. Coffee is wonderful for a Sunday morning, the waiter says. Or, wait. <laughs> coffee is a wonderful for No, No, I can't do it. I'll take coffee as well. Did you hear that coffee here was amazing? The waiter sh shoots me a look and asks if we are ordering right away or if we need a few more minutes. Um, well, I guess that depends on you, Fred. You did offer to pay. Hey, yeah, after all, what what should. <coughs> you, want to... you did offer to pay, after all, what should we get? Do you see anything of interest? I mean, it all looks go looks so good. They got selected pastries and chocolates. I. And I have some really unique desserts. Hmm. I grin shyly. Her eyes seem to hover over the sweet, so. In that case, let's get one of everything sweet. Marco looks at me in surprise. As does our waiter. I hear a semi flustered. Are you sure, sir? Before I give them a quarter's nod. Yes, what better way to make the morning special? He gives me a nod in response, takes both our menus and steps away. Fred, I appreciate this and all, but you, did, but, but you really didn't have to do that. I wanted to. Don't worry about it. But I didn't even get a chance to see their prices. At least let me split the bill. You're acting too generous for a first date. A good rule is to always treat the is to always treat the girl as an equal. She is right. But then again, I've done a lot of things on the side as the new president of the literature club. I should tell her about my <coughs> newfound fortune. Hey, I kind of won the lottery recently. Lottery? I show Monica my wallet. It's filled with a ton of really expensive bills. Oh, you're really rich for some reason. If you insist, I suppose. Yeah, I can take the rest home if, if need be. I don't want either of us to die from a sugar overload. Yeah. Sincerely... I sincerely hope this doesn't bother you. Monica, let's just have a good time. My money is not your concern and I've got plenty to burn. Besides, I rack up my brain thinking about why I did such an extravagance to begin with. Couples get a discount or I would do anything for you. Okay, um, I would do anything for you can be a good, can be a good choice but couples get a 50% discount. I don't know, but maybe the second choice, I guess? I'd do anything for you. Just name it. Fred. What kind of response is that? You should stop putting girls in a pedestal and treat them as equals. Otherwise, you'll never find a real pattern, you know? Oof. Seriously, what's with this stupid Roblox sounds? I should have said something else, I think. Just don't worry about me th about the money at all. I know, I actually didn't even look to see how much money I had with me. I know it's the trouble I've caused with such a reckless action. But in truth, I really do want Monica to have a good but in truth, I really do want Monica to have a good time. This is the first time I've seen her like this. And the first time we've actually gotten a date. You can count on me. I know I can be really be really terrible at this. We're here to have a good time. So relax, Monica. I take a moment to try to collect myself after that scare. Wonder if this is the best time to give her the gift I brought along. Maybe I should wait. We'll be enjoy one thing at a time, and I'm sure I'll know the right moment when I see it. 
The wearer soon arrived with a ton of trays. That's a lot of trays. Oh, oh my. I thought this was a small time chocolate store. How do they have this much vari vari a variety? Monka looks just as stunned as I am. Let me help you with those. That looks heavy. Without really thinking about it, I started moving trays and arranging them on the table to make room for the nest rest. I'm working nervously, looking back and forth at the incoming trays and the ones which are already on the table, but the wares seem perfectly calm. It looks like everything will fit in the end. Magala is red as a strawberry as she watches me go. She is adorable like that. When all of the dishes are in the place, one of the raiders takes the empty trays back to their kitchen. Some of it makes me more even. You feel even more nervous. Monica is looking back and forth over all of the plates, trying to decide where to start. I'm famished. I didn't even have breakfast before we came over here. Wow! But I shouldn't start before her, right? Why don't you begin? <laughs> oh, I will once you do. Hmm. I think I'll start with the cake first. I love, I love its aroma. All right. Which one? <laughs> that one. I notice Monica points out her cake of choice and carve out a piece with a serving paddle. I carefully set into a dessert plate and reach across to set it in in front of her. Here you are then. Gracias! Monica says that last line teasingly. She actually stares down at her cake slice for a moment, probably taking in a very detail of how it looks before she tastes it. With that looks like restrained excitement, she takes her first bite. Using my phone, I take a quick picture on silent mode. Really? Oh look, that, that's a nice picture. A nice, and that's a nice phone art right there. That's that's look good. Like like look at this. Look at this art picture. Hey, look at that. Look, that looks nice. That there are all sweet cakes, and there, there there's also coffee, and there's something in the background. And look at Monica being sweetingly on our date. All right, this that one looks make too much of progress. Hmm. Oh, Fred. It's light and spongy, but it's not quite light enough to be airy, you know. Are you a creep or something? So it's got all the texture. No, I'm not saying that, player. So it's got all the texture. It's got all the texture you could hope for, but it's leaving the flavor to be the to the frosting and the filling. It's heavenly. It's it's sublime. And I've only just gotten started. I take a sip of my coffee, trying to hide a chuckle and a smile. Looks like the money is being spent well. You know, her face alone tells you the great. The cake is great. What if I had some? Of course, go ahead, go ahead. I mean, you're the one paying for it. It's not like you need my permission. Oh, thank God, finally. I don't mind being the gentleman like this, but I am still starving. With as much composure as I can manage, I carve another slice for myself and dig into it. Somehow it tastes even better than Monica made it sound. How is that even possible? I'm trying not to eat too quickly to keep out a sophisticated air in front of Monica. It's possibly she's trying to do the same. She's eating quickly enough that I can tell she's excited. I'm barely two bites into my cake slice before she's sipping her coffee and serving herself another sweet. This food is so good. Yeah. Have you tried baking? It reminds me of Natsuki's baking. Oh, that, those are two good, two good sayings right there. Have you tried baking? Or you no, know I'm just gonna ask her a question first. Then I'll try. You know what? Let me try to save this thing first. Have you tried baking? So did you ever try baking with your mother? Yeah, actually. Good question. My mom always sat me down on the kitchen table when she baked. She's always baked in front of me when I was a little kid. So I think she was a big fan of it then. She was. She even made me taste all the stuff first to test. Sounds like a frequent sweet treat. <laughs> hmm. Haha. <laughs> Actually, so I got older, I started taking over the baking. I would pull up new new recipes and also bake with with my bake bake with my mom. With all the clothes I've been handling, I just kind of stopped over the years too. Like, oh my god, the stupid door! So I guess by your time, I can help revive old hobbies in a way. If that makes sense. So is there any memorable baking moment? Yes, I'm glad you ask. This one time when my parents had their anniversary. Instead of buying a cake for somewhere, I had one right home, baked it, baked by me on my own. Monica, that's amazing! <clears throat> Is there anything this girls can do? Actually, I can't wait for our anniversary, I'd like to learn from you. 
Ooh, this one. I really want to see what you can do with your skills. We'll see you on our anniversary then, eh? Anniversary? Yes, aren't we going to have one? Uh, yeah, sure. This seems awkward somehow. Weren't we on the same page just now? You know one time I tried my hand at baking. Oh, what did you make? Uh, I tried to bake a cake, but it didn't end up so good. I put salt in the cake batter instead of sugar. <laughs> I feel pretty embarrassed. Monica's laugh makes, makes it hard not to laugh along with her. It happens for the best of us, Fred. Funny, funny thing is I only realized it once I took a bite. I thought the recipe was bad. But hey, but hey, memories like these are the ones that you value, right? Even if it's embarrassing. Yeah, you have a point. Sometimes in life, we tend to want to not make mistakes. But in reality, if you never make mistakes, you'll, ne you'll never really succeed. I remember one of those cliche quotes on success and attempt to back up her train of thought. Miss 100% of shots that you don't take. Oh, that's a good one. Basketball, right? Haha, <laughs> I think. I just, saw, uh, I just saw it on the internet, really. Ah! Whew, anyway. That cake was great. But I'm not done just yet. Looking over the table, I, w I want I want to try <laughs> for what to try next. I still on reaching for the chocolate. Oh, Monica barely makes a sound, but I notice her eyes are following my hands. She must really want some chocolate. She's probably waiting on me. Try a piece. Feed her some. I guess I should try a piece. I got the nearest piece to bring me and bring it back over my plate, trying to get my hands out of Monica. <laughs> wow. I take one bite before setting it down. Wow. This tastes great. Try some, Monica. Monica looks startled, like someone just zapped her with static electricity. Um, yeah, I'll try some. With a shy expression, Monica quickly takes a piece the same way I did it and, ta and tastes it. She spoke with low tone of voice just now. Wonder might be on her mind. She has some crumbs on her mouth now. Another quick picture wouldn't hurt. Under the table, I reach for my phone and lift it slowly. And then, smile for the camera. What? In all your glory, huh? I turn the phone to show her the silly picture. Hey, that picture only stays between you and me. Where's the fun in that? Pretty please. You know how others think of me as professional all the time? So please don't... I'm just kidding, don't worry. You do really... You do, you do look really cute in this picture. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I do look funny. We just started a war. I'll get back at you. Oh, we'll see who wins then. Actually, maybe I should change the subject before she figures out how to make good on that tr thread. Maybe it's time for compliments. Ask her about their earrings, ask her about the ribbon. Any, any, my, whoa, who should I compliment of this ribbon? Hey, so, um, ever since we were kids, you wore a white ribbon to tie your hair. Huh? Uh, uh, I mean, uh huh? Do you like it? I do like it. I like it a lot. It makes you stand out and you look really cute. That's why I started wearing it. I always like to try something new, even as a kid. Her parents got me this ribbon! And well, maybe because I want you to notice too. It looks very beautiful though. What? Really? Haha! <laughs> I can't feel my face I can't feel my face heating up. I reach for my drink. Oh yeah. Coffee. Coffee can only do so much to help me keep my cool. But what but it will do. Oh my god, it doesn't even matter now. So hey, so I noticed your earrings. They look really good on you. You think so? Thanks. My dad gave, gave them to me after I did really well in the debate competition. I mean, the debate club? You really were active in the debate club. Hmm. I really like these earrings. I just have a special attachment to them. Are they your first jewelry accessory? They are for ones that I made for a real diamond. He did you did do really well in that competition, so I'm not surprised that he'd give you that. For all of your hard work throughout the years. You really think so? I almost feel like they're they're, they're more special because they were given to me by someone I care about. Again, I cannot speak. 
But I guess I can be proud of them too. My heart skips a beat. Now. No, not now. I won't compete with earrings from her dad. I need to keep waiting for now. Well, I think I had enough for now. Alright, let me just pay the bill. I just ran to the signal to the waiter. I'm paying and uh, I'm paying and some to go boxes for what's left, please. Hey, can I keep some of the leftovers? Of course, whatever looks good to you. Are you sure? I wouldn't want to steal away from your favorites. <laughs> However, I think uh, we'll get Ian, don't worry. Well, okay. Monica stacks some empty plates on each other and ships the remaining ones around organizing them by who will take some for what. They really have more to offer than expected. There are easy enough desserts left here for a week. I could actually bring the fresh for the festival tomorrow. But then again, it might offend Natsuki's efforts on the cupcakes, so maybe I'll pass on that. Hmm. Where is that some boxes on the table and hands the bill to me? While well, he goes to the rings, ring things up, Monica is stacking desserts into boxes. She seems to have, to have very, a very organized approach, and she's using napkins to stack things which won't stick and to keep different kinds separate from each other. You need a hand? You've done enough. Just leave this part to me. I once and turn to the waiter as he returns. Alright then. Man, stupid noise in the background. Wow. I just to position the receipt where Monica won't be able to see the total sign. Like, if you don't know what the noise background is, my brother's watching. You know what? Never mind. This place was really heavy on that on the wallet. And here's the tip. Here's the tip. Thanks for the food. Then as Monica finished closing up the boxes, she hands me one stack of two boxes and picks up another for herself. If I hold them just right, I can carry them with one arm, leaving the other free to get their door. Get the door. So what did you get to keep? You'll see. But, uh, by, uh... I hope you weren't too attached to the chocolate. Don't worry, I can always come back if you want more. And I won't be coming back for a very long time. Marco stops me at the door. Um, by the way, friend, how much did everything cost? Uh, well, I was wrong of me to let you shoulder everything. I just have to lower up the volume a bit so you guys hear everything. It was wrong of me to let you shoulder everything. So do you want me to pay for part of it? Well, ex accept money via honey. Accept money. You know what? Let's just accept the money. It ended up being a little more than I expected. I really will feel better if I chip in a little. <sighs> <clears throat> Sorry. She smiles. Okay. Sorry. Wait. Wait. Woo. Okay. So, yeah. I need to. I just speak up a little so uh, I can't even speak. Okay. Arms up. Well, I guess that's her boxes on top of mine while she get, gets her own money out. Hmm, I guess I don't have a lot on me. So you can take all of it. My arms are full. Oh yeah, they are. Um, here. Sorry if my face is so dark, I really don't know why. Well, I got turns back the money directly into my pocket, then takes her boxes back. Wasn't even half the price. Not even close. But that's to make feel a little better about what I paid. And she said it makes her feel about feel better too. So I think it works out. Oh, look at that art. Looks priceless. This, that, art, 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 that art is so cool. Marka takes note of the way I'm carrying my boxes and does seem to free up one arm. Without so much as, wor as a word, she holds my hand while we walk. Oh, that's adorable. At the Lido chocolate store, we spend a lot of time touring the city. We went window shopping and eat in some of our- You know what? It's actually so loud. A little bit too loud, I suppose. We went, we went to the window shopping and eat some of our take-home dessert when we got hungry. Wow! I exhale as we walk up to the nearby bridge, our hands still holding each other. I guess you really spent the whole day together, didn't we? Yeah, I barely even noticed the time going by. I know, right? Although, I guess when I think of how many flavors I got to taste, it kind of makes sense. We paused for a moment as the breeze catched up on us. She slowly re 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 releases my hand and sets her boxes on the ground before turning to face me. I'll I follow her in and set mine down as well. Aw, look at me. Look at it. As she gives me a hug, I see why. That's just adorable. Hey. 
thanks for the great time. Money means a lot to me. Heck, I'm glad you came. It really made me happy. Oh, wait a minute. I nervously pull away from from her as I check my pockets. Before I forget, I have something I wanted to give to you, give you. Close your eyes, okay? Really? Well, okay. Maria covers her eyes with her hands. Um, actually, I need your hands already, so I really need you to just close them. Oh, all right. This might not be a ring or anything. Haha, <laughs> not quite. No. That's probably a few years off yet. I just need to take her hand and slip my gift into her wrist. What do you think? Monica opens her hands and quickly spots and looks over my gift for her. A, grease pla a green place bracelet, matching the color of her eyes. Ah, Fred! It's beautiful! Where did you get this? It made me think of you when I saw it, so I thought that, would you, that you should have it. It made me think of you when I saw it, so I thought... I think I said that already. It looks perfect, or is it? Yeah, I barely read the whole thing. It looks perfect. I love it. Thank you. It's funny that this made you think of me. Because, well, now when I see it, I'm going to think of you. Really? You've done so much for me today. Now you should close your eyes. Okay. And I'll need your hands this time. Alright. Before I have to process what's happening. Monica kisses me. I am in shock. Did she just... Her lips. They're so soft. My first kiss. That is so adorable. Clap that up. Clap that up. My first kiss. With Monica. Most popular girl in school. And my childhood friend. Well, I'm still convincing myself that really just happened. Monica picks up her boxes of sweets and turns to the direction of her home. Call me soon for our next date. Bye, Fred. Monica runs in the opposite direction. She's running. Uh, yeah. Bye. I pick up my own boxes, still stunned by what just happened. That was amazing. Our first kiss already. I should get going. Today started off great. My phone vibrates in the pocket as I walk home. I take it out with my free hand to, to take a look. Sees Monica sent me a message. Thanks again. Wow. I still can't believe it. I pulled it off. I slide my phone back into my pocket. Wait, what's this? I gave her the bracelet and my wild goes in the other pocket. Mint? I gave her bracelet and my wild goes in the other pocket and it says mint. Shoot! My mouth probably smelled horrible. Hope I didn't mess up the kiss. But again, it probably had a chocolate taste to it. Oh well, she had fun. That's all that matters. I had a really good time. Seems the festival is coming up soon. Hope things go well. God, I hope Sayori is okay. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be one where I'll be walking to the school with my vice president. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I was really going to her house to check up on her again, but I decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for her the, for the event should be nearly complete. Since I worked with Monica last Saturday, I didn't have to bring anything. She sent me a few happy few happy texts here and there. Funnily enough, I would probably feel the same way as not to give up the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I spend the time with everyone at the festival. But with that, what we planned, I'm sure that, that the event will be great too. That's funny, I'm the only one at the school. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. There are little booklets on there are little booklets on each desk of the classroom. Might be one that Monica prepared that all, that that has all the poems we're performing. I'm surprised that Yuri isn't here. As vice president, she would have accompanied me, and I hope she's not hanged, or she already she's already about to do it, or somehow like Doki Doki exit music. That dummy. I suddenly feel awful knowing it's not really that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But, maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Why do I feel heavy weight in the air? Oh no. This is just a bad dream. This is just... I make a dash for the door. Oh my god. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. Oh no. That's because of the deal. I'm so nervous now. Oh my god, I hate this. I can begin the deal to at least meet her up on her. Or help her wake up. 
Even the simple gesture of walking her to school but makes you know, her really happy. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the but door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. Sayori. She really is a heavy sleeper. Alright, let's just... Let's just prepare the event if Sayori is either hanged or not saying that she's about to do it. Like Doki Doki Literature Club. And I don't know, but I'm gonna get anxious to do that quickly because it's, it's not really that great. I know. It's not really that great. So prepare yourselves. Either she's hanged or not hanged by the noose. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Walking up in her own house? In any case, it just feels right. Out of Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori, wake up, dummy. There is no response. She really didn't want to enter her room like this. It looks like kind of a breach of privacy, but she really needs no choice. I gently open the door. Oh! Did Sayori just slap me? I feel I feel a light slap on my face. Fred? Fred? A cheery voice cuts through the darkness. I groan tiredly. Wake up, sleepyhead! Whoever went up to me stares to shake my body. Wow, it really is a dream. Jeez. What? What? Or is it supposed to be Sayori though? Jeez. What more will I have to do to wake you up? Yeah, that's a water and dump it in you. Our comic could work too, I guess. After hearing that, I truly wake up. Okay, okay, I'm awake. My eyes shut open. In the room, I was it comes into a view. Oh, what the heck? Or is that is it is that Monica? I was starting the hallways, so I can hear the sound of students walking around. Their voice all tired together. My attention is drawn back by looking to see who is waking me up. Oh, it's Sayori. <laughs> and in front of me is Sayori. With a smirk on her face, she playfully flicks my nose. Jeez, you're and you always question me on my lateness. I lay there and fall asleep on a very important day. I'm sorry, I've been here since the crack of dawn this morning with the other club presidents helping set up the festival. I got really tired, so I ended up laying down on the floor. Next thing I knew, I was knocked out cold. Okay, she didn't get out, getting up hang, or she was about to do it. She's just, um, like, she's just, uh, like, she's, I don't know what she's doing. Is it Monica? Did Monica just came here and just left or something? I sheepishly giggle. I think I should have been dreaming of Monica's soft kiss instead of that specific nightmare. I'm just glad we're all here. Sorry, Sayori. Or is that the is that part of the festival? Oh my god, my nose is Sorry, he smiles at me warmly. I'm just kidding around, you know. It wasn't bothering me much that you slept. A nervous giggle escapes Sayori's lips. I mean, you know me. I've slept a lot. I always tolerate it. Open my mouth to retort, but I close it, laughing heartily in response to what Sayori said. She smiles back, warming up the chill morning atmosphere. I dance around the room once, classroom once more. Don't worry, I see Monica standing there with an amused smile. You two really aren't morning people, huh? Monica approaches us both. I know Sayori isn't, but I would have guessed you were too, Fred. Sayori starts playing with her fingers awkwardly. Monica continues to stare at us, waiting for the conversation to continue. Science decides to stick around for a moment. Out of the blue, I see the dynamic duo of pink and purple enter. That's a consoling a copy of Chasing Ghosts. Yuri is only the first volume of Parfait Girls. Oh, you guys, you guys seem to get along as well. You did, you did, you did very good of you guys. Good. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Wait, are you two holding the wrong books? They don't normally belong to each other. To the other. That's because their arm is defensively over her chest. Well, I'm gonna try and read something out of my comfort zone. I always beat up books with descriptive words, but I never truly sat down and read them. Read them. So after the festival, I'm gonna start reading Chasing Ghosts. Yuri promised me she she would at least read the first volume of Parfait Girls. Yuri starts to play with her hair. Well, I did promise you that. I won't lie, I'm a little excited to try and read some different from my usual. So this will be an interesting experience for us both. Yuri steps in between the two. I'm glad to see you two getting along so well! Monica also chimes in the conversation. It's a stark contrast to your narrow engagement that I very much enjoy seeing. The four start talking about random topics. Monica reels it in by directing the attention towards me, and my nose is itchy. 
Who you, are you gonna speak to first, Fred? Speak to first? Is it the choice? Well, you don't have to check up on my members or something. So, yeah, let's see here. Like, who should I speak to first? Sayori, so, Natsuki, okay, you know what? Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Which one I'm going to choose first? You know what? Yeah, maybe Monica, because since I am dating her and all, that I want to impress her, but I didn't even write a, po write a poem this time. So, yeah, I'm just gonna choose Monica. Monica looks as perplexed as I approach to her. She's got this soft stare on top of that. Not to mention her hands are firmly pressed to her sides. I guess she's on edge for some reason. Hi Monica! Monica, my oh, nose is itchy again. Why? Monica nods her head to acknowledge my greeting. Hey friend! Big today, huh? Yeah. Everyone did a good job with the room this morning. For a moment, I thought the whole thing would be a chore and we'll all end up fighting or something. You're fine, or you never see this day happen, you know? Yeah, I guess it's all, it's all an insane effort itself when you think about it, Fred. Three days. They managed to put all of this together. Take a good look! You got Yuri's banner and aroma scents. Natsuki, Natsuki signature cupcakes. Yuri's pamphlet designs. All you need to do is wait and see if people bite into the little advertising stunts and done over the weekend. Advertising stunts? Yeah! After a Sunday date together, I tried talking to some of old connections in debate, chess, and sports clubs. Or sports clubs. How to rid of the faculty. It's amazing what one can accomplish online these days, given that little confused research and determination. Yeah, I guess I'm just having made it successful in one piece. Pretty sure things would have been different if... If... Um... If what? <laughs> Never mind, Monica. Truth be told, things do seem rather off for some reason. Maybe it's just me. As it feels like I've lost my own voice, I don't seem to follow, but I wish you luck if ever you need to find it again. Maybe I shouldn't have left the presidency. Haha! <laughs> I had a really good run in the debate club. I gave it to Monica's eyes. Those forest green eyes. Oddly enough, they look kind of tired. Don't get me wrong, I like the debate club. Probably one of the most op opinion opinionated people there. Especially when it came to philosophy, ethics, utility, science, and technology. But ever since I've left, I've done to deal with being lonely. It's cryptically, really. I'm just glad I got to spend some time with you, Fred. So quitting the club wasn't for nothing. Ah, did she really mean that? I think I'm turning a little red. I started Monica as. An odd silence overcomes her. I pat Monica's shoulders and then step away from her. My attention returns to, to the other club members. Alrighty, so... Let's see here. Well, since Sayori and Natsuki are my favorite, I'm gonna go with Sayori. Sayori, I choose you! I don't get a response at first. Very but he stares at me as if I'm crazy. Then the smile spreads across her face. Of course I do. Must I have been during one of those tutoring lessons out of the home. Don't remember my memory is all hazy. Well, Sayori, we did spend a lot of time valuing each other too. I assume you've gotten better over the years. Sure, Sayori then begins to go off on a, on a tangent, and the music stopped. The love her game must have influenced her, I think. What the? So it took me some time to figure out the. So it took me some time to figure out the controls. Why is Mike what I'm actually choosing? Why are the blue ones with the most? They're really strong. The green ones were really terrifying. I remember how nobody could catch them. Like, I don't know why, but I need to get a better voice though. I try to understand stuff like this poison types. Oh, did I get to get the best? I should have the pink say one was so cute. I mean, I love using them against you. Yeah, you kept losing because of that. Sorry, the game series is being a part of my home life too, you know. Me too. Honestly, why do you think I don't get out of bed sometimes? Sometimes I'm lazy, sometimes I play all the games with all the characters I just listed. in. Siri, I get it. Listen, I can be pretty passionate with games, manga, and anime too. Sometimes I think we could have been 
been leading the game with club instead. That's fine. I'm here all together. Sorry to interrupt you, but I only have one thing to say regarding your Rambo. <laughs> what would that be? I'll have to battle you sometime tomorrow. Harry's eyes fire up from excitement. You're on! Uh, oh, Frank! Aren't you? Wait, did I say that? No, nope, it's Sayori. Hey, oh, you're here! Did you get to see the pamphlets? Hmm, I guess I haven't reviewed them yet. Well, you know how I walked out last Friday? I kind of did write a poem. They were on writing one. What reviews me last Saturday? Oh, I see. I decided on teasing Sayori a little bit. I bet you've just felt guilty that everyone had three poems while you had just... while you had two. What? It's true! Bossery is drowning in guilt. I decided to pick up one of the pamphlets in the school's desk. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is completely printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognized Natsuki and Yuri's poem for the ones they performed during our practice. Soon I flipped to Sayori's poem. Alright! Flowers on the field. Sometimes the night are in, the nights are in dark. Sometimes the blanket is in cold. Sometimes I feel a friend standing in a field. I feel the flowers bright and gold. Blue, red, purple, green. Like a rainbow, like strings to a beat. Like fingers tapping to the wind. It's the same dream each time, but I don't feel so I don't feel sad. I feel like break breakfast and eggs. I feel like sunlight after rain. I feel like cookies and guppies and all my problems go away. Flowers on the feel help me grow. Flowers in the fields don't go. I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of the snow. So Sayori is afraid of so so is afraid of winter. Oh, it's it's beautiful. You think so, Fred? Ruth is after taking a nap. So I thought it would be terrible. Well, he did good with this one. I think it just kind of completes the story, you know. Completes the story? Yeah, with the festival going on, it's all balanced. Anyway, I get to avoid the question for a bit. Are you excited for today, friend? I'm excited and nervous. I have no clue how today is going to play out. For now, though, I'm going to be keeping my head up high. I have to anyways for you and the others. How are you feeling about today's festival? Sari's hands go up by her sides as she speaks. Well, I feel the same way. I was waiting for the festival to start so I can see if it either goes poorly or if it goes great. Do you, do you have your phone, Sayori? You no, know, the one you're supposed to be present today. Oh, wait, did I say that? You know the one you're supposed to present today? Yeah. Oh, right! No worries, I've got my poem and my attitude free for today. As worried as I am for how the day will run, I'm going to try to succeed and inspire and make everyone happy. That's the Sayori we all love and know. Keep it up. Hold my hand out for a high five. Yeah, Sayori's poems come back in the mind. Walking away from Sayori while shaking my head. My attention then returns to the other club members. Alrighty, let's go with Natsuki. Like, here's the thing. I don't like the, wor the worst character I know can be Yuri because I don't really trust her that well because of because Yuri can be such a maniac from Doki Doki X music and I really can tell that she's going to be insane for this because I, I don't fully trust her. I smile and jokingly bend a little bit to reach Natsuki's eye level. How's the club cutie doing this morning? Natsuki throws her head up by the side by her side. I'm not cute, Fred. And not everyone really think I'm fine. I'm the club cutie. I decided to leave Natsuki infuriated and move on. So are you ready for the festival, Natsuki? I mean, I suppose so. I wish I could. I wish I could be back home and find a game my dad and I put, I can play together. I raise, I raise an eyebrow up. You you found a game that you and your dad can play? Wait, wait, um, wait, um, wait, like. Does, is Natsuki's dad really a bad person though? Like I've seen other Doki Doki Mas that his dad is a bad person. Like he always abuses to Natsuki. Even the video called Bio made the bike made that as well for the video. I'm pretty sure that his dad can be a bad person I guess. But I'm not sure. But let's just... Let's just... Oh, my nose is itchy. Yeah, it's like a cool fighting game. Me and my dad played it last night. He actually found it fun. 
My dad isn't normally into most modern day stuff and prefers all our games for their pixelated aesthetic. But my dad finds it fun. What game are you talking about? Cause I might know what it is depending on what you're talking about. Trust me, you wouldn't want to know about it. But it's a pretty cool fighting game. We we'll argue over the best character. In the end, we we'll argue the best character was this guy throwing blue fireballs. Like, is he talking about firefighters? Is it? Or I I can't remember the game I played. Like it's from my my iPad or something. Ah man. He can whoop some butt, I tell you. Even though I know something nothing about what she's talking about, I realize why she relates to whoever that is. Do you think he can whoop some Natsuki? I better bet that I'll be serving some to the audience at this festival today. I'm all ready to go, honestly. I got my attitude since I slept well. Not to mention my poem and treats. Oh, that's phenomenal. Natsuki blinked. For a moment, she looked confused. Oh, I know what that word means. Yuri used it this morning on our way to the club room. I asked that question that I may bring on, on, on another slight to Natsuki. So, I mean, how, uh, my nose is itchy, what the heck? I don't know what's happening to me. How have you been, how have you and Yuri been, Natsuki? Me and Yuri? Yuri Natsuki takes a moment to think. To be honest, he, to be honest, we've always become sisters. Oh, nice, Natsuki! Yuri and I agreed and we talk about what matters to us most when we get present our problems. Plus, we had a very heartfelt conversation about our differences. As you know, Yuri and I are exchanging books. We did that as bonding things. I've already read the very beginning of the Chasing Ghosts. I gotta say, it's totally a Yuri kind of book. Deepest themes, lore explosions. Now you seem to be starting to get hang of about the horror stuff, Natsuki. I'm kind of loving it. Sorry, I'd love to hear you ramble more, but we have the festival to get to. Let's go strong today, okay? Natsuki nods. Let's swing it out of the ballpark. After our exchange, I return to the group. My touch returns to the old club members. Alright, let's go with the most insane person ever. I see Yuri smile as I stand in front of her. As, I, as always, Yuri stands tall in her usual elegant manner. Hello, Fred. I hope you like the decorating I did today. Decorating, huh? The room is amazing. There's even that signature I room sent to the things. The atmosphere is just one point. I was never really clarified how many medals I needed to bring. I brought enough for two classrooms. Yuri smiles and turns her head to face the doors to the classroom. I thought I'd bring some extra supplies to promote our poems. I was freaking let out a chuckle. What's with the funny smile, Fred? You normally put a lot of thought into what you say, but sometimes don't, don't consider what you do. Oh my god, my head is so itchy. What caused you to come up with a promotion, promotion plan? I had coffee this morning instead of tea, so I'm feeling more stimulated than normal. I gasped with it. You really didn't seem like the type of woman who would be into coffee. I thought Monica had something to do with this. Yes, that's correct. Monica said I'll try new, I should try new things. I have my first cup of coffee. How'd you drink your first cup of coffee, Yuri? Three spoonfuls of sugar and three packets of cream. It is very sweet, but I still to enjoy the caffeine. A, a different way of starting the morning now is necessary. I feel for it to take considering it's the festival. Anyways, I'm sure you'll be surprised to hear something else too. And what will, and what will that be? Not to give me to play video games again. This time, I played something out of my comfort zone. It's actually it's a cute little game based on the Parfait Girls manga she reads. You play as one of the girls, and you attempt to be a mayor while balancing your superhero alter ego. It's a very silly game, but I enjoyed playing it a bit this morning. I laugh at Yuri's son enjoying for di of different mediums. What are you laughing at? And you and the fact you're suddenly so interested in listening to Natsuki and doing what she suggests to you? It's interesting to me. Well, I blame the fact Natsuki is sweet and cutesy. I'm glad that someone else agrees over Natsuki's adorableness. Especially comes from you, Yuri. Yeah. I thought you would have argued the opposite. Well, today is a different day. I'm trying to change my ways. And even being more talkative and accepting. As long as as long as Yuri making progress about the insane boy thing going on, that will be alright. Because I don't fully trust her. I, she's the worst character. That's a good attitude to have. I'm really happy to hear it. 
Anyways, do you have your phone? Of course. Let's all prepare it, ready to go. I feel like I'm going to into a play honestly. Well, why is that? I really like to try and perfect my reading skills today to be the best I can be. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Keep your head up. Let's get through it today, okay? I owe my aunt Yuri to a high five. She just returns to just to give me another warm smile. My attention then returns to the other club members. After checking in each of the four girls, I go over to close the doors of the classroom. I hear the sticking of the four behind me. Okay, everyone. I take a deep breath in. Are you all ready for the festival? Yes! All right, let's all get to work. We repair the rest of the room together. Already eager students come over to visit. Some of them pick up the pamphlets and read. Others come from Natsuki's cupcakes. A few arrive to admire the welcoming aromatic atmosphere. I can also tell some of those that have stayed to fall over Monica. Alright, what do you think, Yuri? I... I think it's beautiful, Fred. Wow, look at the art of this! Like, look at the background! Yeah, this is so cool. Wait, wait, wait. You know what, I'm actually going to leave this video here. Let me just save first. You know what, actually... Yeah. So I have to I have to leave this video here for an episode here. That what I I have a good time of those four girls talking to those four girls. I have an awesome thing of these things and kind of like um having fun with the girls and having a date with Monica. Have my have the players first kiss to Monica. And it's actually a very good adorable episode now right now and especially about the Sayori scene. Oh I'm not. I'll, I will not need to hear that. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the normal Doki Doki Literature game, you have, you have to check this game out or look other videos to the YouTubers though. So I hope you guys enjoyed Doki Doki Literature Club Monica Before Story. If you really like it, leave a comment or leave a like. Bye guys! Hashtag peace out!